Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Crack Your Mind on Silver TV here with TG. And uh, today I'm with uh, my friend and brother from Nigeria, Owoyele. Let me bring him in so that he will introduce himself to us. And uh, we start, we'll get the show started. Hello, Owoyele. Can you introduce yourself to us, please? So we'll get the show running. Uh so pleased to be here. My name is Femi Owoyele. Okay. I, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I run a publishing business in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I also double as, I, I, I also work, uh, or rather I'll say I'm passionate about this around leadership, politics, governance, because I did political science, first, second degree. So I'm passionate about that. And, um, I think basically I'm also into farming. I'm an active farmer too. I farm in Abiyokuta, Nigeria. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stephen uh, Owoyele. Nice to have, nice to have you in. I think this is your second time of coming on the show. Although the last time we, you were just in briefly, so I I thought we should give you a chance to come in again and. Uh, because I actually loved the way you spoke, very sound, vibrant, and I thought, okay, these are the kind of people who want to hear their voice in the community to make meaningful contribution to our society. And that's what we do here on Service TV. On Service TV, our intention is to see how we can bring out vibrant youth in the community so that we can have voices out there who are com contributing meaningfully to the progress of our community. So we generally talk about economic sol uh, eco uh, solutions to economic issues around Africa uh, countries. So that's what we actually focus on. So um, we've been seeing what's going on in Nigeria and uh, the protests uh, about NSAS. And um, we felt, okay, since you were in that day, we felt we should continue the conversation and uh, see how far it is. And this evening we'll be looking at, I call we're imagining what could be going on in terms of business and uh, the economy generally, how, what was what, what's, what's the update like? What's the current situation of the protest and um, how is it going? Uh, oh, obviously, because of the disruption, uh, um, economy as it were is affected, no doubt about that. Um, I went out yesterday and I saw how um, an entire community was just locked down, absolutely locked down. Uh, in fact, I couldn't navigate through my route, how to look for external movement and uh, other ways to get into my location. And I saw how a number of things were paralyzed, but that is at the local level. So at the local level, if you look at how the entire uh, enters, uh, movement has um, affected businesses, you will say that, okay, uh, it has affected individual businesses, uh, the movement of people from one location to the other uh, and all that. But much more heavier is the macroeconomic effect itself. And that has to do with uh, big corporate and the government. And Lagos being the heartbeat, or I would rather say the commercial nerve of Nigeria, is hardly hit uh, by this protest. And also um, Abuja, also in the week, but let's focus on Lagos as um, our case study in this case. And that is part that you would see that the governor, apart from being actively um, involved in the open source process, trying to ensure that he plays the role of a mediator between the young people and government, is also more interested in how much are Lagos are since this enters uh, we see the consistency with which um, the protesters in Lagos have remained um, resolute. And then um, they blocked Lekki uh, toll gate, which is like the intersection between businesses on the island, apart from VI now, businesses on the island and the land. And for example, is, um, uh, is in that every movement and fro into Dangote refinery has been constructed is terribly in there because you have to pass through the tokens and both ends have been blocked. That is one. And that's just one example. Um, activities have been paralyzed. 
regular meetings, regular events, a, a lot of things are affected. But like I said, focusing on the macroeconomic effect, it has affected revenue generation for the state and the federal government at large. And you will see that there has been effort to persuade, to placate the, the people on site to just please let there be a breath of fresh air. Or I, I also understand that the youth have refused not just because the government has not spoken, at least they've said they granted the five out of the five uh, initial demands, but these are demanding, are resolute, and are not willing to go because over time there's been failure of promises. Over time, before now, when the government promises and the ensure sets up committee, everything ends up in that committee. And that has been the unfortunate reality. So I would say that the economy is bad deeds, and we hope that uh, we would, I mean, uh, like you'd say, they don't even have jobs before. So let's break it down. Let's cut it. There. Maybe we can regard that things. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a, a very beautiful introduction. Um, having said that, uh, we know, uh, like our people always say that you use one hand to to beat your 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 uh, goods and you use one hand to drag it in. So... Do you think it is wise for our youth on their part to actually insist on going on the pro continuing the protest, even though our leaders have said, okay, we've heard your cry, we've seen your request, and they were working earnestly to see how we can get this resolved? Uh, well, I would not say yes, and I would not say no. I would just like us to look at it from two, um, two perspectives. Uh, the first one is the one I ended with. When I said that one major reason, uh, the youth uh, uh, repeatedly said they will not leave the streets is because of um, failure of government in fulfilling politics, even at the height of protest before now. But that notwithstanding, so what, what let, to, to round up that perspective, I would say that all they are trying to do is to do beyond just making a statement. That is one. Uh, number two, what they are also trying to do is to see beyond the, yes, we have a statement of government, to see action in place, to see prosecution of identified um, SS members who have perpetrated evil in time past. It doesn't cost, I mean, uh, we, we, we see how prosecution is done in states that are serious with issues of life. Uh, and so you would know that it doesn't cost um, effort to initiate and start the process of prosecution almost immediately. And the youth wants to see seriousness. They want to see, uh, and all this thing does not take beyond 48 hours for government to just, instead of just saying, we'll set up, we'll set up a committee, we'll set up a committee. That is on the part of the youth. Well, coming back to your question, the other perspective I talked about, uh, there needs to be an organized voice of the young people at this stage that is looking towards dialogue, negotiation, uh, that is looking towards sitting down with the government to have a clear direction, that is looking towards the area of saying that this and this are what we want, we need a timeline, and we are going to come off the streets because we cannot perpetually remain on the streets like you observe. But on, still on that, it's difficult because you will see that the uniqueness of this protest as it is going now is that there are no specific leaders. It's not a protest organized by NLC, neither is it a protest organized by a, an aggrieved political party. It is a protest organized by the people. And at that level, it is more difficult to say that these are the people that we need to bring together to the table to negotiate. Of course, it will still get to that. And I, uh, since there have been, imagine, I mean, over time, there has been, there has been a, a number of young people imagine as um, frontliners in this protest. Uh, we have some of the category has to do with some of the activists represented by Aisha Yesufu, um, Sega Link, and a few other activists like that on one hand. There are a few others that are represented by um, entertainers. I mean, people that the youth look up to, uh, like celebrities. 
Some of them are past, partly celebrities and activists, like Faust the Bad Guy, all, some of these other guys uh, are in the front line. So there are all these are people that uh, show themselves in the front line in this, um, in, in, in this protest. They can actually still come together to channel a one voice to say that let us sit to the government because, like you, you rightly observe, we cannot perpetually lock down. Eventually, if it goes beyond what we expect, if the military is sitting, uh, no, we are not expecting that to happen if the government is sane and is thinking well. But we are just saying that in case the military is in and all that, and everything scatters, or some other thoughts are mobilized to disrupt the entire process. Now now lose out on both ends. Just like you said, we won't be chasing. You will beat a child, and you also use the other one to draw him back. Because ultimately, peace is the, should be the focus. Peace and um, the success of our the reasons why we are out there should be the focus. Not violence. Not um, just point where we will not have direction. Yeah. Thank you. Um, having said that. You 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 spoken well, and uh, in your in your response, you said um is uh this is more like is a unique protest like what we've always written in news, and that's what we've been looking out to see if there's any form of organization. So, being that is something that is is this is a protest that has, that that was not actually organized by a certain group of people. Although looking at the way the 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 protest is going, initially we actually thought it's something that will just be for a couple of days and everyone will just withdraw again and just to you know just like showing awareness to the to the to the, uh, to the leader that we are tired of this system but seeing it lingering and with the way it's now going we can see that there are people actually supporting the protest from all uh, spheres uh nigerians in nigeria nigerians in diasporas even some leaders okay i just got an article a few uh, minutes ago posted on facebook saying uh, the, um, that the um that a governor gave someone uh, gave out the sum of four million naira to a group of protesters last week and uh, apart from that now we've heard again that they've launched uh, uh, an online radio platform to update themselves on 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 what is going on nationally on the protest and that region platform was is dedicated to the pro uh, to this uh, uh, youth protest uh, uh, again looking at the the way it, the protest is going on all over the country it looks we know it's, it looks like they are not organized but in another way it looks as if they are organized because i could see that um in the news this morning i saw a live uh, broadcast by one of these uh, radio um online um, uh, news uh, uh, platform showing how they managed um the fact they were holding service in um i see a lucky target also in, and lausa several places so now that they are it, it shows that there's some level of organization because in that place they have people who, there was uh, the the mc of the show said uh they gave a uh, appreciation to those sweeping the place that they in fact at the end of the day they make the place tidy and they have people who are totally stand by not policemen not security but they are just more like self uh volunteers who are volunteer to secure the crowd and they have people who actually bring in food and so even in benin we saw where they m put food on the road blocked the road and were cooking on the road so that showed there's some level of um some level of organization so do you think um it would be wrong for our leader, what would have been the best approach for our leaders to address this? If you were to be a leader, what would be your approach in addressing this issue? Because it's more like an outbreak in the, in, in the nation. So how would you actually address or what would be your advice to our leaders in addressing this kind of uh, okay, so uh, issue? Quickly, quickly, before I address that, let me uh, go back to the issue of organization. Now, when I talked about organization, uh, I, I was referring to the fact that there's there, there's no leadership structure that are visible that are like identifiable people on the front line to say that these are the initiators or organizers of the protesters. But uh, that's why I mentioned that the protest is unique because it is now so organized that you would think that everything was had been planned several months before today. The structure, the coordination, the arrangement, I mean, the unity, 
you see the Muslims and the Christians agreeing together to provide security while the other one, one of them is praying. You see, you, you see coordination, provision, serving of food and everything. And the fact that, so they, 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 those are some of the factors that gingered a number of people that were just sitting at home watching the whole thing from Twitter and um, online platform before they started joining and felt that oh, it looks as though these things are running well. So the organization is unique because it was not planned. And it, it also shows the level of uh, intelligence. I mean, you've also seen some online works like acting of uh, some of the platforms uh, that should not generally not be at and all that, just for information sake. You see that youth are IT savvy, they understand these things. They, you, see, you see that you, the government as it were is contending with a force, a force that is beyond uh, military force, a force that is beyond um, power, and a force that is beyond the barrel of the world. This You are contending with intellectualism with I, um, in, uh, IT, technology with a set of people that, that are driving organizations globally in the 20s and 30s. So that way, you may not necessarily say the, the organization is up at that level when everybody brings their assets together from financial to intellectual to, to all forms of resources and say that we want to drive a team. That's now back to the question. What should uh, the government be doing I think the very first thing that I, I, I have seen that the government is still struggling and which one is and responsiveness of the president of Nigeria. Yes, the president at some point, but don't forget that he spoke at a forum organized for something else. He just addressed the issue in passing, uh, that we are also concerned about what is going on. Uh, we, have ad we are addressing the issues and all those. And so he, he spoke in passing, as it were. Of course, the Vice President has spoken once, twice, more than once, and, and all that. But this is something that is locking down the entire nation. This is something, like you observe, that is spreading from state to state. This is a protest that, if not well taken care of, can lock down the nation beyond the impact of coronavirus. Yet, you have not seen, uh, and the people already have a simple demand. Apart from all these items, they want to see that the leadership of this country is firm, is, and they want to see him represented. The president is not um, in an isolation center. Neither is the president in a, a foreign land, even if he was in a foreign land, I mean, the case, and all that. He speaks, he, had, he has meetings. So what do you majorly wants to see is an active and responsive leader, not represented by a special assistant or media, or, I mean, when nothing is wrong with him. They want to see response. He is, uh, 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 they want to see action. They want to see political will. They want to see him committed to this cause of changing the narrative. Don't forget, the narrative is not about SARS anymore. The narrative is majorly around issues of police brutality, reform of the police. I mean, imagine a police um, sergeant taking 49,000 naira. It's a take home that cannot take him home. So they want to see clear actions and they want to see these things being taken by the police. I mean, let him come on and address the young people. Let him see that this is beyond saying, let them put action in place. That way, I believe that. So the government should, uh, when you say, what, what the government should be looking at, uh, engagement. Yes, they said they want to bring up a committee and bring it. Yeah, let, let them initiate the process. Let them start negotiating. That's the, the, the force. The force of unity that you have seen here is also a bit difficult to force it down because don't forget, the youth this time around are represented by every um, of elites and the low level people as it, as, as it were. Some of the children of some of these renowned people, their causes in this, in this protest. Some of them, their children have decided to join this protest, regardless of whether their fathers are in the political or the party. So it's difficult to calm down on them. And that's the beauty of this unit. So the government should be looking at, um, the government should start from the end. We cannot afford to be cutting lead for by from the back. 
The president has to come out, has to come alive, has to be responsive, has to be fleet, has to put up structures and systems in place. The people in the must, and I'm and, I, and I'm being I'm being frank. That one of the reasons why everybody is doubting this setting up and saying that we have accepted your demands is because even the only time you see the president again commented on this when the US state governor went to deliver the protest letter to him, he was sounding as though he was just unaware of what is going on. You will see the response saying that, okay, I thought we already are seeing that too. And he sounded disconnected from what is going on, even though the country seems to be getting altered day by day. So that, I think, is an additional value. In addition to every other thing the government is putting, you will see that people will respond. And the government may also need to speak with um, some people that the youth believe in, influencers, I'm talking of more, and all that. Bring them together and let them have that love in this job. Because young people, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you, you've spoken well. That uh, I, you, you suggested, if I get you correctly, you suggested that they should engage with uh, influencers and um, people who uh, have voices in the in the community that are well known. Uh, but looking at the 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 the, the way and ma uh, and manner the way in which the protest was um, uh, initiated and how it is going, and the lack of structural organization like you said although i listened to i saw a a, a, a post from one of the media where are uh, they me um uh fire me uh, the, are they me the pastor that the the, the active pastor i think pastor are they me yeah where he, where he said people should exactly sam are they me yes where he said uh, people shouldn't really worry about um about the structure that they should focus on what they are in for and uh, they should not be distracted and uh, that their voice their voices and organization is on the street so they should focus on what they are in they are requesting so having said that yeah uh i know it will be more like a distraction if they bring issue of uh, leadership in knowing who we are as the blacks when it comes to leadership we tend to be a bit greedy and self you know so if they bring if if we put all this together and looking at um, the meeting that was held last week, let me bring up that so you see. Uh, uh, Osimbajo had a meeting with all uh, uh, the state governors and they came up with this uh, a structure like this for each state to manage the, the situation, to investigate and um, come up with a solution within six months. Now, in this structure, they have a slot for youth representative to be nominated in each state and in this particular structure they gave only one slot to youth so knowing the way it is for instance uh omoyele showware has been crying for good governance in nigeria uh we know other art activists uh who are also young that have been making moves namdi kano just name it a lot of them like that have been making moves and in their various locations if they want to select people some people may not want to identify with them probably because they, don't, they never identified with their vision in the first place so don't you think this will actually be a, a, a way to to, to 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 crumble the use in their agenda obviously because uh, power um, when it comes to issue of power and um, interest yeah, uh, you, you would see, especially when it comes to the issue of representation, whether among young people in Nigeria or elderly ones, it's always, it, that's where you begin to see interest. The interest this time around may not be around religion or even ethnicity. The interest may be on other biases, just like you rightly pointed out. If, for example, um, a youth is expected to be selected Per state, who selects? How mm -hmm. who do they consult? How would they select the selection process? Go, um, would they just come together on the protest ground and say that we come? I mean, of course. But that that being said, too, um, these are may, may also be then uh, the youth that will be selected. Will the government also have interest in who is selected uh, or who will be selected 
or not? How would they not influence the selection process? At the end of the day, by the time you take a youth and put in the midst of uh, the committee set up per state and all that, to what extent would they influence decisions? So some of these things, they appear a bit complicated. Uh, uh, the, the, I would say, to make it very simple, to make it very, very simple, I would say that first, I saw the time frame six months. I would say that there should just be a, a national constituted body, not a, a domesticating it. To say, of course, states can have their system to like Ogo State has set up its own. Lagos State has set up its commission of inquiry uh, to look into the issues and provide solutions of a better relationship between uh, police restructuring and even with uh, the, the society. But that being said, I believe that the way forward and make, making it simple, like I said, will be that the government should just constitute a team, just like they are proposing already, a team that will have rep balanced representation. And balance does not necessarily have to take into issues of uh, PCP. The youth have proven that they are one in this case. They should also look at balanced representation from the youth. So they would not say they just need two people from the youth. And then you have a human rights commission, a lot of government parts, part of the team and all that, so that they don't get overwhelmed. I think uh, at this level too, if I were to be given a chance to talk to the youth, I would say that we should quickly start looking at an agenda. It doesn't cost so much to use technology to drive our imputes. It doesn't cost so much to set up a platform through which we can engage, what even virtually. So our representatives are not just representing because they are intelligent. They are representing because our policies or what our actions are are being coordinated and well managed and all that. Some of these things the government too are saying they can be run virtually. The world has gone beyond this analog system where you sit and have committee and start discussing and discussing and start sending out communicate. The demands are simple. Representation can be an issue, but in the end, they still have to give us a chance. I mean, they should make it open. You to still have to find a way. And going into this protest this week, they will start looking at, and I think that has been is being done already. Start looking at how we can have representations, how we can have people that can stand in dialogue. And, and I think if it means voting, if it means um, using online platforms that could be really to just select, okay, let's put up names. They are already in the front line. Wu and Wu should be our representatives at these meetings. We can vote online. It's a simple thing. It's just to put up a, a, an online pool and get young people to put in and say, OK. And don't forget, there are people that naturally, by virtue of their competence and consistency in this struggle, will, will, their names will come up. And I don't want to mention them, but I will feel but mention this, uh, like this woman. Uh, this uh, the Aisha Yusuf yeah. woman, the father mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. guy, and some of the other guys. So they, they have been. So oh, oh, you mentioned Soure and Nambikano uh, earlier now. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I for one like Soure because of his doggedness and the fact that he just detests and has proven to hate um, um, corruption and all this. But don't forget that he's already uh, he contested the last election. He already has a tag on a tag. Him. Yes, as a politician. Apart from being a presidential aspirant, he's moved a uh, revolution now movement before now. And people say, no, this one is not about your own revolution now. The people have refused to own the revolution and they believe that it's a show rare arrangement to take over government by all means. I don't believe that is true, but that is the perspective that a number of young people have. So that way, you cannot even, they, you, you cannot even have people like that being brought forward because they will feel that there is a personal or group agenda in this case. Ditto for Nam Dikanu, who is believed not to even be interested in anything Nigeria. I call Nigeria jungle. I mean, it shouldn't even be mentioned in this uh, kind of um, issues. We should really focus more on people that are, especially with regards to this struggle now. I'm just talking about this struggle. Because and issues about um, restructuring and even going our separate ways is another issue for another day. But when it comes to this issue of resolving this issue, we can look at the frontliners and they can, we can find a way to sort it out.
Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I know it's easier said than done because what that's, yeah. that's what I know that that would be a very, very, a, a, a big issue to resolve if it comes up and uh, with the agenda that the government has placed forward before, um, uh, before the masses at the moment, because there must be a way we cannot say we want to r rain down our economy for the fact that we want SARS to, SARS to end. And uh, the government uh, responded swiftly by scrapping the, 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 the SARS. Firstly, I know they, they set up uh, the, the swap, uh, the swatch to replace the, 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 and they gave us an agenda of how the SWAT will, will, will go. I think uh, that was also rejected because they gave us a, a part A and part B uh, scheme. I think uh, we have, we had this. A five-point uh, agenda that well, what the new team will look like, and uh, they gave the first part, and they gave the second part. So the masses will really understand what the team will look like. Although, um, from what I gathered from a few people I spoke to, in you know, a few youth I spoke to in Nigeria and my previous guests, they said people have rejected it because they've seen that the SARS people have been mixed with the, the, the with, with the police so meaning is it might be the same people that we will see in different uniform probably transfer to different locations so that you don't know them and in the long run give them a couple of months the same attitude will, will, will surface again and uh we will have the same problem i'm back to where we are at the moment and uh what again i've i've uh, I've, um, our previous guests have said is the issue of not actually adequately funding the police that that's another that issue that will still make them behave the way they behave so look looking at all these issues put together it's more like a compound situation that will take a while to actually be addressed by our, our, our leaders so knowing fully whether this is a compound situation and looking at the kind of leadership system that we've always had that they actually take their time to respond to issues we don't really have that kind of government that responds to issues swiftly like overnight or within a week and we come up with solid solution even with a long time given time frame they still struggle to come up with tangible lasting solution to problems so in times like this that this one has come up like and is a strong push don't you think uh, the push if too if done too hard will make our leaders to take action that may that we may all regret in the near future uh well uh, i uh, you know i said that too earlier that we should not wait till um the government or uh, i also feel in the end the government too, you know i mentioned that too, we number one we shouldn't wait till we start having um uh the kind of responses that will turn this whole thing to a mess that will turn this whole thing to a, a to violence I will turn the whole thing to um, what we did not uh, anticipate when we started. So, personally, I believe that the youth have to be swift in drafting an agenda immediately. When I say an agenda, now I mean an agenda to leave the streets by themselves, not being pushed, not being so that way we earn um, respect, earn honor. And we can also have um, a level of um, uh, negotiation power by the time we want to sit with government. So that way, uh, we, and I believe, I want to believe that this week you will see um, there's a tendency for that to happen almost immediately. So let's wait to see what happens from tomorrow. I think tomorrow is more like a mega one from what I've had from different states so far, after which decisions will be taken how they want to take the decision we have given we can only give our own suggestions and opinion we are not the frontliners i know that there are meetings and um, forums going on to sort this thing out early then back to the other side which is the government side too i also want to believe that government should also be wise in their uh, should, should so should also uh, try as much as possible to to allow wisdom to guide them because at this level, yeah, if it seems like he's looking like he's, uh, we, we are about two weeks in this protest, and then two weeks does not equate forever. I'm not saying that the government should sit back and be watching uh, the whole thing to be going perpetually, but they should also understand and see this is different. 
Nigeria had an its independence, 19, Nigeria became 60 this October. And uh, the movement this time around is a movement with resolute mind. Is a movement that if the yeah, hello, like we've lost you there. Are, are you still with us? Oh, like we've... Is... yeah. Are, are you still with us? We've, we've lost. We've lost you for a while. to go the okay like we're having network issues like we're having network issues we've lost you can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Uh, while we wait for you to come back, um, we'll quickly be showing the updates of the uh, protests as received, or the pictures, or these are the pictures of the, the, the protests so far, and uh, what um, the placards they are carrying, the message they are sending across to our leaders. And uh, we hope they, uh, our leaders are actually working hard to see how things can come to normality, how they can restore peace and uh, unity again, bring back our economy to normal running uh, conditions so we don't crumble the economy. And uh, we also hope the youths are not actually uh, going to prolong this for too long because we know, we know it's an art cry of a long suffering. The burden they've always they've, they've endured for so long, but even at that, I think uh, we should also listen to our leaders and uh, see how we can uh, work with them to 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 revive the economy and uh, bring uh, peace and serenity to our system. So that is um uh, what we hope for. And uh, that is our desire because we don't want a situation where this will escalate into uh, something not desirable for all of us. So we, we'll, even in the in the in the means of uh, crying and uh, making all this noise, uh, no, I would call, I wouldn't call it noise as per se, but uh, in the means of making our voices heard, uh, I think we shouldn't overdrag it. Uh, so that uh, it wouldn't lead to, to 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 what we don't pray for, because in the event of if it goes beyond control, then uh, we we'll all still regret the impact on the society, and uh, we wouldn't want anything that will impact on our uh, community negatively. Because in addressing in uh, sharing our pains, we should be uh, sensible enough to actually listen and uh, have a way to to, uh, to to bring normalcy into whatever we do so while we wait to reconnect our guests hopefully uh we've lost him so while we wait to reconnect our guests um we we'll hope to look at some of the updates so, so these are some of the updates of, of what has been happening and uh, today we've heard that um, it's even increasing as against uh, uh, coming down so we we plead with our leaders to engage with the youth and um, to see how things can be resolved because the youth uh, are actually <laughs> we know since this is not something that <laughs> is organized and um, there's no specific leader that could be addressed at this time we still Hope that our leaders will find a way, either by using uh, the media to address issues on daily basis, probably an hour-long um, conversation with leaders via the media, 
so that they can engage with the youth every probably every evening, appeal to them and uh, let them know that things are uh, give them update on the steps they are taking to bring back uh to bring back peace and uh, look into their, their their issues. So I think that will go a long way. And uh, there are other things because with the measures that they've brought, I know most of the youth are seeing it that this might not work as a result of what they've seen in the past. So looking at it from that perspective, I don't really uh, know what, but it is our prayer and it's our desire that we return to normal, uh, normal economic system because businesses are crumbling at the moment. The protest is going to have impact on lifestyle. And uh, we believe not just on the part of the citizens, but on the part of our leaders as well. So we hope to, to see everybody come to uh come to an agreement and uh, let's get our economy running again that is what we're hoping for we're looking at what we're trying to see if we can reconnect our guests so but while we're doing that we would like you to drop your view please if you're new to this our channel please do well be kind enough to subscribe click the like share our conversation with others our view here is to share our uh to, to 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 contribute to our community and uh, we'll look generally look into economic uh problem we'll look we'll try to talk on solutions to economic issues that borders the africa continent and uh, we look at engaging youths and try to see them to be part of governance to be take to take responsibility in their communities and uh, push our nation forward because the, 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 the to 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 bring um africa to limelight to bring our communities to to where we all want to be we all have to play a role and uh, we have we all have to be uh, uh be responsible in our individual capacity so that is um something that uh, we look forward to doing in Service tv we come here we stream live on wednesdays fridays and sundays we hope to increase the days as time progresses and we hope to bring more interesting topics in future we'll, as time progresses we we'll want to bring different kind of show we're looking at promoting small scale businesses in africa for free we we'll bring them in they talk about what they do they tell us about where they, they, the, the, the challenges they face the policies that are hindering growth and uh, where they need support so that together we can all build the community that we all desire because we believe that for peace unity and progress to come to our to uh, the, the continent is not going to be the job that should be left to our leaders it's the job that we will all take on It's a task for everyone irrespective of your status It's a task for every citizens and residents in the continent we have to play our little role no matter how small it is and uh, this is where we actually, uh, uh, this is what we stand for here on Sovers TV. So um, with this struggle going on in Nigeria, we appeal to the youth to actually um, look into the, 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 the plea of our leaders. So we'll bring everything back to normalcy. We know we've been uh, pushed for so long and there will know actually that there's a uh, hardship in the land we know that there's poverty all over the place we know there's unemployment i've always said this on this show that with the high level of unemployment that we have uh it's really something that is worrying so but even at that we will still have to appeal to ourselves to to calm down to maintain peace again and have a way to sit down with our leader let's engage most importantly we shouldn't be on the streets without a plan as we're on the streets, we should actually come up with plans, a template, a prototype of what we require, a kind of economy that we want, and we should be part of those that will drive it, not just dropping a template before our leaders and sitting back after now that, okay, um, we've said all we want, we, we expect them to carry, them, to carry out our task for us. 
it should that that wouldn't really bring uh, us to where we are, at, we are, we are aspiring to, to get to. I think uh, it's like we've had our, our, our guest is back. Um, we lost him for a while. Uh, Mr. Femi, you back? Hello, Stephen, you back? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Femi, I'm back. Okay, Mr. Femi, okay. Yeah, can, can. Uh, yeah we lost you for a while. So um, you were saying uh, something. Can you, can, can you carry on from, uh, we, we lost you. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it was a network. I think it was a network issue from here. Okay, okay. It was, so, yeah. so you you were talking on. Um, uh, where were you before you 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 left? No, I was trying to uh, establish the reasons why um, the young people, the youth, we youth should um, accept the negotiation at this level and start um, and start rescinding our steps mm -hmm. on one hand. And on the other hand, for the government to also understand that we are in it, we've been in this thing for two weeks. Two weeks is not forever. And then uh, when it comes to issues like this, this is not a protest that uh, you maybe we are protesting for fuel price and this. Uh, this is a protest that has serious foundation, foundation in the deaths of so many young people, foundation in wickedness and brutality in lives being low. if you it, it's just um there's no amount of figures or estimated figures that can be put out there about how many people have been brutalized killed maimed by um our sas officials and generally the uh, security forces that can justify the real deal i have had my own experience uh with with SARS, and thank god in the end i was i was saved I, um, it could have ended the other way around because when they took me to was a strange place I'd never been to in my entire life. And I mean, at the end of the day, of course, of course, I I was um, I was I was released for doing nothing. I was apprehended for nothing for doing nothing. I was released also after they were able to get to two thousand I had in my pocket that day. But for that, I did not know what could have happened. And thank God I am safe and I can talk about it today. And that has been the case of so many lives. So a lot of people that you see out there know a friend, a cousin, a brother, or a sister that has been dealt with. Some of them are no more today just because of this brutality. So the emotions are in play. The government must understand issues around psychology, uh, issues around these things. People are emotional about this thing. And that's why they don't really say that uh, they can just be. So all they can do continually is to, like I raised the other time, is to look for a more coordinated way. And I think they are doing that now, um, speaking with people who they've seen the youths um, defer to. And uh, some of these people you had mentioned earlier, uh, maybe they should start talking to people like Sam at uh, some of these guys, some of the other young guys and the elderly ones that they've seen that have identified with this uh, struggle. So they could start talking to them and let them see reasons why they need to also use their influence. Since the youth seem to listen to them, to call them to order to understand and see these things are not just immediate. They are short term medium term and long term solutions to this whole thing entirely so that way i mean it will continue passing so take uh, sometimes it takes longer than you expect but now you should also be wise to measure the result of your potential action treatment compared to because if you start to put out force now the entire thing will be disrupted you, you may not even have control over it and the revolution that has been long awaited will happen in the end uh, we pray for a military intervention. That has the potential. When everything is disrupted, there's always a reason for something to happen that you don't even estimate. So what I saw is that when the government tries, the government tries to put force or use force to douse this tension using the military and all that, it will create more problems than they could ever think or imagine. Because I tell you the truth, there are a lot of young people out there that you see that are ready to die. And I'm not saying that to just say they are ready to die because it just felt this is more like a do or die affair. It is long overdue. SARS, when SARS was only a, a trigger. There are a lot of bottled up issues. I mean, look at what is happening. The, 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 uh, it seems that we, we have leadership that are not 
trusted as it were. I mean, the Senate and House of Reps and uh, people take so much than you could think of people compare it to well uh, developed societies. I mean, you wonder what are they doing that is making them earn millions and millions of naira every month in a country where people find it hard to even make 30,000. And the minimum wage, we will struggle and fight to make it 30,000 naira. I'll compare it to. So at the end of the day, you get emotions, you get anger. The system needs to be disrupted and it has been done. So, but like I said, it's a balanced side. The youth uh, district needs to come together and say, it is high time we give them a chance. And if they do not, within the period that I specify, we are coming back this time around with full force. That way they will have honor. That way they will have this thing here. That way they can now drive a change. So I think it's a balanced side. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, good. Now you've said that now, let's talk about the youth represented. I'm, I'm still concerned about who, how the youth can be represented. Now you've mentioned some neto, notable uh, people who have been into the system, who have experience, and who have been conversing for good governance in the system as well. People like uh, Ad Sam Adeyemi, uh, uh, Falana, uh, I think it's, it's called Falana, the, this uh, uh, son that is always actually... Yeah, I think it's the father for uh, Faust, Faust's dad. Yes. Yes. So these are people that we know that we always see them conversing for, standing in for people who have been uh, maybe wrongly accused or who have been arrested during protests or for speaking up. So do you think it would be a wrong idea for people of this nature to represent the youth in, in the event of maybe um, uh, they say, okay, we need a committee. So do you think, because I think this experience is required, that so many people are dancing on this, it doesn't mean that those many people, they have experience or they even know what will be required to bring a, a good policy system or a good governance into the system. You understand? So we still need experienced people to be the voice of the youth in this kind of uh, situation. So what would be your view in terms of bringing these people in? Uh, so the, the reasons why we're mentioning these ones are because they are um, renowned faces. And then the fact that uh, some of them, apart from the, the last person you mentioned, the Fauzi, apart from being an entertainer, um, is, is a lawyer. And um, apart from being a lawyer, um, his style of music consistently has been uh, challenging uh, government speaking about uh, bad governance and why we should, I mean, even before now. So, but that being said, I, I'm not even looking at him as like, uh, the reason why I mentioned the name is that also, so that those are names you can really ordinarily easily identify with, you know. But there are a lot of much more intelligent sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they have the exposure, young people, mm -hmm. they have the exposure, they have the requisites. Capacity, capabilities that have all that you could. I mean, I, I, um, I, I, if you allow me to mention them, there are a number of them. They are out there. I mean, I shared a post recently uh, on my page, and it was a, a comprehensive analysis by someone called um, in Nigeria, Emmanuel Tafa. I mean, he, he distilled the entire process, what Nigerian young people ought to be doing by now, how we can organize, what we should bring to the table, how we can bring it to the table, why we need to um, calm down on this protest quickly before we, were, we are calmed down and all that direction. So there are a lot of young people like that that have seen, uh, and, and people know some of this, but because by the time you put out a name, that you know that you and check the track, this person, this person is a public policy analyst that has worked even to the level of the United Nations and all that. By the time you put, people start thinking, where has she been or where has he been in this struggle so far? We can't just trust anybody. People are even afraid to trust anybody as we speak. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's difficult. It may really be a bit difficult, but I believe since this situation that we find ourselves is a child of circumstance, unplanned, yet organized, well organized. I believe that within the next week that we're entering, this week now, there should be direction because the young people to have started this conversation as to how do we engage government, who engages on our behalf, 
and all that. So I may not be able to provide direct solution as to specific areas. Uh, the, 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 it may also have to evolve. And I believe that conversations are already ongoing as to who represents how choices are made. You know, I mentioned earlier that eventually we may even need to do opinion poll among ourselves, I mean, to, to, to make this happen. If, like you say, it's easier said than done, but there will always be a way. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we, we also read this evening that the government is looking at involving the military. What, what's your view on that? Do you think that's a, a, a wise move or do you think that will bring, is a way of the government trying to threaten people off the street and uh, while conversation is ongoing to, to see how they can respond to this uh, request as quickly as possible? Okay, so quickly, the government has not officially officially put the word out that uh, there. What they said is that there's this operation, you know, like the, the operations the military do mm -hmm. periodically. There's Lafayette, Ole, there's uh, Crocodile, Storm, all these names that they give their operations. These are routine operations that have been, uh, that they've evolved as a result of the, the issues around terrorism, kidnapping, bandits, all these issues that are happening in Nigeria. So these are like routine. Uh, operations, maybe once in uh, this and all that, this in six months and all. So I think what I read is that one of those operations will be, will be, will be, is, is built to come up by, to start again by, uh, by, by Tuesday, officially, that is from the military. But that notwithstanding, the government as it were has not really put out a statement to say that uh, this is what they want to do. Uh, they are bringing out, uh, they have even denied uh, openly, that uh, the statement that the government is trying to bring out. So there is, of course, at this level, there are fears in the air, uh, conjectures. There are, in fact, you see screenshots that people will do Photoshop, put the military headquarters or the presidency as sitting this meanwhile, actually, it is not true. So there's been a lot of uh, issues around that, and I believe that uh, I don't expect that to happen uh, anytime soon. Because uh, the military uh, is not a, a, a good um, arm or a good force to do civil engagement, especially in times of crisis like this. But so far, the reason why they want to come out is not even there at all. Because the only reason why the military should come out naturally by law is when there is a total, when, uh, when, when protest, peaceful protest as it is now, turns to a major violence and that the, the police for police as it were uh, or the civil uh, security forces the police and others are unable to end the situation again such that it is becoming a threat to the sovereignty of the nation uh is so the situation is about to become disintegrated all those things that is the justifiable reason why you bring the military in bringing the military in to quell a peaceful protest is in itself uh, uh, insane, as it were. And uh, apart from that, the government just wants the economy to run and life to go. Who are the people? Majority of the people, because it is about the people. The essence of governance is about the people. The people themselves are comfortable with disrupting the system until their demands are met. So who is the government serving? By bringing the meat to bring sanity and society. So, uh, to, so there is, is a peaceful protest, as it were. I don't expect, like I said, the government has not said that. And any other thing around military for just the routine operation. And these ones have specific and they have um a modular operandi for operating. Thank you very much. Uh, coming to the issue of uh, because I think even as of yesterday I read on um, on on the news as well uh, on the uh, uh, on the media as well that um, where we, we there are people the same youth coming out armed fighting protesters so it's more like we have two versions of the protest some are coming out to be anti-protest while some are for the protest so those that are for the anti-protest do you have any 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 idea about what their view is or what they are what they stand for okay there are two levels to that uh, answer now first is that there's a class of young people, or then I, I will not even say young people. There is a um, largely in the northern part of Nigeria, 
there is uh, an orientation that the, the, the young people themselves have not even spoken. The governors, where they have refused to speak, the governors was, have been speaking for them. And you will not blame them because uh, they have worse cases of insecurity, which they are grappling with. So SARS for them is uh, 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 it, not fully um, uh, the, the brutality of police. Either they are comfortable with it in a way, or I would say SARS as it were, is not um, fully, fully dominant with regards to negative operations and not. And the reason is this, um, like I said, number one, they have more weightier matters, weightier issues of insecurity to deal with. So SARS, uh, then the operations of SARS basically is Thai young people. The, the, the reason, SARS has its purpose, uh, which is anti-robbery, is a special force. Unfortunately, why the, we, we are challenging them or the, the, there has been issues here in the Southwest, South, South, in the South generally is because rather than focus on the core issues, they, 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 they were running with a prevailing mindset that every young person or may, many, many young people looking good, driving good cars, I mean, um, I've been dressing like uh, the, the, the generation uh, or them um, doing all kinds of dresses somehow, uh, are natural or ordinarily doing um, internet fraud. Or I want, they just want to extort. Even when they know that you're not doing internet fraud, they just feel that the young people seem to be successful. They should also, we should share the money together. That's why you have a lot of cases of them taking you, ensuring that you do transfer from your account to them before they reach you, not because they find anything incriminating with you, but because they find money in your account and all. So in the moment, you don't really have um, a lot of such issues. Like I said, there are worse issues of insecurity. So you would naturally expect that you would feel that, oh, even the SAS that you are saying they should go, are uh, even helping us in their own little way to provide intelligence or even finding local, uh, um, some of these are worse for us and all that. So why should we have a problem? If they don't want them in the South, you can do so. You will see that most of those uh, issues, that issues exist. Then the second of anti-protest young people, take, if you if you take your time to just simple analysis, you will discover that largely the streets, largely touts, who really do not not for or against the protest, but are for what they will get. Because they do, they are, they were they obviously they were obviously mobilized. Um uh, I don't want to say maybe by the by, by the power, let me just say by the power that power that be may not be government because that is feeling that let's just find a way to use them against them. So by the time you look at the people disrupt, they are basically out. No, you would you hardly find, apart from in the north, like I said, you could find the pockets of uh, intelligent people to lead the protest of, um, like, one eye in the blind, that kind of thing. Uh, or intelligent people actually in the north still champion for the reasons I've established, which can be justified. But in the south, here, yeah, largely, those that are against uh, the protest are largely south who were paid to just destroy who do not even care what you are fighting for, even though it affects them, they don't care. All the is that we have been paid and we need to do the job. I think that's the difference. So I, I don't believe they are likely, uh, other people that may not be anti protest are people that are afraid for others, that are just trying to be docile. They are afraid that uh, the military may come down, the government may use force, this thing is coming true, and those that are also directly affected in their businesses and all. For every Nigerian who has had connection or had people who has had contact with these forces in the past, we feel that let us just disrupt this thing once and for all and get it right. Thank you. Uh, this is really very, very, it's really very, very complex to look into if we... But um, we, yeah, we pray that we restore peace and uh, uh, order to our community as quickly as possible because we cannot afford to, 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 
break down our system just for this purpose. And uh, we, like our view here always is we are seeing how we at the grassroots level co ca can be part of governance, not necessarily by being elected, but by taking on little tasks. Like you said that you're a farmer. So being a farmer and uh, being a political analyst, in one way or the other, you are contributing into the system. You've seen other uh, illegal means of making work before you say, okay, let me delve into farming. You are a master's degree holder. So it's not issue of you not being sound, but you've seen that because of the high level of unemployment, you can't afford to be unemployed. So you've looked at, okay, how can I make myself useful in this community? And looking at the trend at, to which Africa is going, Africa is now tending towards farming. You've looked at, okay, Farming is the next phase of, um, is the future of Africa. You've said delving into farming. So these are the kind of things we're looking into in Sova, here in Sova City. In fact, we were even working on a show where we will actually promote small scale businesses in Africa for free. Where they come on the show, they tell us what they do. We broadcast it for them for free so that we can put people out there. So that in, in, you never can tell people that are, that are passionate. You, 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 you must have read in the news today where um, a, a, a protester that the, the lady that was in clutches was they, they've yes. raised well over four million plus for that lady. That's we have passionate Nigerians who are actually interested, who are willing to support from what the little they have, they are willing to share. So we are looking at how to bring people out, to spell out what they are suffering and the little they are doing currently. Oh, I'm doing this little thing and uh, this is where I actually need help. These are the policies I, I hope the government should look into. So that way, I think we should have a positive way of engaging with our leaders. So that's what Sova Steve is coming to. To, to address in the system where we can actually because i know if we have look at the force we have on the street if we can be this loving and united to come together irrespective mm. of race irrespective of ethnicity irrespective of religion that's to tell you that these things that we hear in the media that we're uh, because you are yoruba because i'm Igbo, because he's a uh, hausa is just propaganda mm -hmm. it's to tell you that we can actually unite yes. so if we can channel this force together and we'll start promoting one another we believe here on server civil that if we can put this energy together we can actually even oh. neglect our gov government or we'll be begging them is policy because we can promote each other network with each other i will push ourselves into success because if we network i will push you forward you will network will push on so in the long run we we'll say that it will become a system where the bottom level people the operational level people are actually the one even making the system work as against wow. waiting for the government to do everything. So that's something we're working on in on the pipeline at the moment. And uh, we hope to achieve that because I'm really very passionate. Wow. Like I told you, I'm passionate about... I, I know I, I, I graduated in Nigeria. I got my first degree in Nigeria before I left Nigeria. And uh, I know how I suffered looking for a job. You understand? So mm -hmm. what, even that's why the fact that we're in a place that is actually civil, where law and order is in place, where there's fairness, there's justice, there's... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I still have that passion that where we come from have to be, we have to contribute to the system. And I think one of yes. the ways we can actually do so is to use this medium to see how we can bring mm -hmm. people's face out. Because when the faces are out, then we cannot meet with our potential uh, sponsors. We can meet with our potential customers. We can meet with our potential saviors out there. So that's something yeah. we're working on. Now, talking on this uh, en energy, the, with the unity, with, 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 with this level of protest we've seen on the street, yeah. Um, do you think this? What, what level of impact do you think this will have on our leadership system and, and our electoral system going forward? Wow. First, I will say that I commend your effort and your passion, and I believe that it will it will translate. Little little fire can go further than you could ever think or imagine. So well done. And I'm also proud to be here. Exactly. Uh, so back to your question. Mm -hmm. uh, the energy we have generated in the last two weeks is heavy. And it's also a sign, a good pointer to the fact that, see, uh, if well coordinated, we can, we can transform things even just by our will. And you said, how can we translate this to our electoral system and even governance generally? Obviously now, there is pressure. Uh, or naturally already on the our representatives, on elected officials, people in government, people in the civil service, uh, corruption is not popular again. Yeah, hello, hello. It's like we've lost you again. Hello, Femi, are you there? 
Hello, hello, for me? Like we've lost our guest again. Oh, he's on the show. Hello, Femi, can you hear me? Okay, while we wait for our guest to can I please bear with us. Um we hope to have him back shortly. Uh leave his network glitch on his part. Let's see where we stand on this. Let's see. Yeah, we we'll still have him in. Hello, Femi, can you hear me? Okay, while we have, while we wait for our guests, we we'll project this the updates from this uh, protest so far. So we we'll, we we'll, we'll know. Hello, Femi, are you back? Okay, let's see if we can bring our guest in again. Oh, it's gone. Let's see. Please bear with us, please. We're seeing how we can bring our guest again. There's a bit of network issue. This is something this is, is expected if you're dealing with um it's quite some distance. This is uh it's in from Nigeria, so we expect some level of glitch. Please bear with us, we'll soon have him back on the show. Uh, so we we'll round up this conversation for today. And uh, while that is going on, if you are a youth in Nigeria or if you are a youth in Nigerian youth, either in Nigeria or in diaspora, we appeal to you that we should all put hands together because it is the duty, it's our duty to see how we can promote our communities. It's not, um, we know we've elected our leaders to, to represent us. But whilst we, while, while we wait for them to do their best, or while we look on them to do their best, we should also be part and parcel of governance. Because the, the, the job of governance is not easy, especially looking at the, the, the level of uh, uh, the state with which we, we, we are in Nigeria at the moment, or in Africa generally. Because the, the, looking at it, we cannot keep, we can, we cannot keep being identified as a third world country we have to step up and for that to happen those of us who have been privileged to leave the continent i think will have a role to play and those of us living in the continent those of us who are young and passionate about economic progress we still have a role to play so i think it's time we all brought up our energy our channel our energy in the positive direction not just only to protest i'm not against this protest like i said earlier in previous episodes um in, in even though we want to protest we should have a template of solution and we should have uh, a, a track record of our efforts in trying to contribute meaningfully to the progress of our communities that way in no time if we all put efforts together like collaboratively we'll come together we can push at the bottom level, we can push our system forward. So it's not uh, only about our leaders. So we should actually take up this. But having said that, I still have to thank the youth for the bravery, the, the boldness to speak up. But having said that, uh, a guest uh, of uh, one of our guests said on this show last week that um, having protested have you been in this in the sun and in the rain for this uh long uh for a couple of weeks now in come 2023 will you as a youth avoid collective bribe during election will you be credible enough to vote your choice will you be part of those that will elect the next set of credible leaders that will lead our our, our country that is the question that is before us at this moment because we cannot spend all this time in the sun with all this energy, with all this uh, braveness, then with all this passion because the passion is for good governance. It's clearly spelled out that we can all unite. We can all stand for what is good if we mean to. And this has shown the world that unity, there's power in unity. So the question before us is come 2023 are we ready to promote free fair and credible election in nigeria because for that to happen we all need to have our voters card ready 
we all need to go and register to vote and we all need to be present at the electoral venue at our different polling units to vote and elect the leaders that we hope or that we know will bring sincere development and true change to our system. So the burden is on us, not just to protest, but to be ready to stand out come 2023. Because now that we've made a footprint, we've added our views to our leaders, it goes beyond that. We must now stand up to say, okay, come 2023, we are willing and we are ready to stand behind our leaders to choose to elect credible people to run our community. Uh, I think uh, we are still having difficulty bringing our guests in and uh, we might have to schedule him in again to complete this conversation. I know we're almost done, but there are other issues that are more pressing uh, very important and passionate to, to, to economic development that we'll be discussing here. Please, if you're new to this channel, like I said earlier, feel please kindly subscribe, share this conversation, and feel free to con contact us to be a guest. Let's see how we can all put heads together to push our community forward and build a better community together because it is our duty. It is your duty. It is my duty. We want a good family we must have to be a good family member. If we want a good nation, we must be good citizens. Good citizens that are meaning that are well meaning to contribute meaningfully, to be part of governance, whether elected or not. And at this time, I think we'll have to call it a day. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see you again on this channel. We we'll broadcast Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. We we'll hope to bring you more days into the show soon. And uh, please feel free to drop your comments. And if you know any area you need, you think we need to make improvement, please feel free to drop it in the comment section or get in touch with us. Then uh, we'll, 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 so we can get this channel better than this and we'll render you, we'll provide good content for you. Content that are meaningful and that are very, that, that, that you can consume with happiness and with joy at a time that you will not regret the time you spend with us. At this moment, I remain your host. I am TG. Bye-bye.